Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel and today I've got a selection of CDs to show you these were purchased in charity shops and one or two of them were also picked up at uh, car boot sales there's a mixture of world music, folk, uh, some jazz and rock music both mainstream and uh, some more unusual items uh, if you're new to the channel or you haven't subscribed before it'd be great if you could subscribe just press the uh, subscribe button and also I'd love it if you would leave some comments below on what you think about uh, the purchases I've made and uh, anything that else that you wish to uh, add okay first up very well-known item uh, high voltage ACDC this was uh, one of the uh, digipack reissues that came out uh, about 10 years ago now it's a compilation drawn from their first two albums which only came out in Australia uh, TNT and high voltage and the one that was released internationally was also called uh, high voltage it's got some fantastic tracks on uh, ones that everybody knows like um, it's a long way to the top if you want to rock and roll uh, some great guitar riffs uh, the Jack fantastic guitar riff in that uh, just a totally brilliant album from start to finish and next up we've got some world music and uh, this is Issa Bagayogo who uh, came from Mali and he was a Nagoni player uh, Nagoni is a um, African instrument a spike lute and it's an ancestor of the banjo uh, there's some great interplay on this album with uh, his guitarist who's called Musa Kone and some fantastic female backing vocalists as well that help lift the tempo now, if you check on YouTube there's some live performances of him uh, really good quality uh, picture quality um, which are worth checking out very sadly uh, he passed away in 20 sec uh, 2016 after after a long illness and uh, yeah I think he was a, a real talent who would have just got better and better if he had lived now this is a band when I bought this uh, Bark Psychosis uh, or rather Bark Psychosis uh, I got it into my head that they were a grunge band from from America uh, it turns out that they are a, a British band that's been going uh, on and off since the uh, 1980s and they've never really had any commercial success whatsoever uh, led by Graham Sutton and uh, the, I think the problem they had was that the, they were impossible to categorize so some of their music had uh, some sort of jazzy uh, dance elements and was uh, very listenable and then at the other extreme uh, they might be lots of uh, noise and uh, ambient music uh, this is a compilation of, of some of their material uh, the app's called Game Over Blue and Three Girl Rumba I think they're the best uh, uh, most accessible tracks on the album there's also a, a 21 minute uh, ambient piece uh, called Scum which uh, you're unlikely to uh, listen to more than once and, and yes they're really worth uh, checking out and um, very interesting artist um, basically it's Graham Sutton who's got uh, the rights to the name now although he hasn't recorded as Bark Psychosis for a few years I think if you're a fan of Talk Talk uh, the more experimental material by Talk Talk uh, you'll enjoy Bark Psychosis and uh, he has worked with a member of uh, Talk Talk I'm not sure if he's on any of these tracks though and next up uh, Luca Bloom uh, this one's called the acoustic motorbike um, most people if they've heard of Luca Bloom they know that he was the brother of uh, Christy Moore got a beautiful Irish accent uh, just like his brother uh, but his material is a bit more pop friendly and he likes doing although he does write his own material he does like doing some unusual cover versions at times and this one uh, has a cover of LL Cool J's uh, I Need Love uh, which is quite an inspired performance really and it's uh, worth checking out if you've not uh, heard of Luca Bloom before next up fantastic trumpeter uh, Clifford Brown 
He had a beautiful tone to his playing, um, in the same style, I, w- I would say, as Miles Davis. Um, this album, uh, Clifford Brown with Strings, it has uh, the strings arranged and conducted by Neil Hefty, and they complement the relaxed performances by the band really well. Sadly, uh, Clifford Brown died tragically less than 18 months uh, after this album was recorded. It's um, a hidden gem from the 1950s jazz scene. Uh, This one's um, not quite as good as I was expecting it to be. Uh, The Climax Blues Band. These are tracks recorded from 1969 to 1972 on, on their first record label, EMI Harvest. This is many years before their one and only UK hit single, um, Couldn't Get It Right. It's all a bit anonymous. Um, I think it, what does help is the uh, almost uh, prog uh, pop feel on some of these tracks and uh, Colin Cooper uh, and his alto and tenor sax. I think he's the, the highlight for me uh, in listening to these recordings. Um, Talking of progressive music, this is, uh, in terms of instrumentation, there was a bit of similarity with Climax Blues Band, but uh, Coliseum, it's full on prog. um, And you've got master musicians really, uh, John John Heisman on drums, uh, Dick Hextall Smith on tenor and soprano sax, uh, Dave Greenslade uh, on on keyboards and vocals, but it's all a bit in your face, and uh, the vocals are particularly poor on this album. I think it's uh, dated quite a bit. Still, it's it's nice to have it on uh, CD, and I've played it uh, two or three times trying to uh, get to grips with it. But um, yeah, I, I can't particularly recommend it. Uh, this is a very uh, obscure, or well, certainly it was when I bought it, I didn't know anything about this this band. Uh, I just liked uh, the cover and I thought, oh, it, it might be quite quite good. Uh, it's an I- uh, not Irish, it's <laughs> an Italian uh, big band and it's their take on those uh, funky big band soundtracks they used to get on uh, mainly action films in in the 60s and, and the 70s and they recreate that sound pretty well uh, uh, they tend to cover songs that were pretty popular uh, back in uh, the 90s 80s and 90s so you've got uh, their version of um, uh, back in black uh, by acdc uh, owner of a line uh, owner of a lonely heart by Yes, uh, and one or two others which you'll probably recognise. But I think the best track on here is is actually a, an original, Profondo Blues. And I could have done with more original tracks rather than uh, the string of, of cover versions. But it's uh, quite an interesting find. I think it's one of those CDs I'll never see again. So I'm glad I, I picked it up when I saw it. And next up... I got this one for 25 pence just to uh, make sure I got four CDs for a pound. I know I've already got this uh, CD, but uh, uh, you can't turn up Jimi Hendrix for 25 pence. And uh, if you're not a particular fan of the guitar histrionics when he's playing live, uh, and I'm I'm not particularly a fan of the live performances, Uh, I know it's sacrilege to say that, but... uh, I prefer the studio performances. So this is a fantastic compilation of studio recordings. Uh, So you've got all all the greats on here. Purple Haze, Wind Cries Mary, Hey Joe, All Along the Watchtower, Stone Free. It's it's chock full of uh, classic performances. And uh, next up, we've got another Malian musician and he also plays the Nagoni, like Issa Bagayoga. And... um, He's worked with the most famous Malian musicians, uh, Ali Fakatore and Tumane Diabate, and it's uh, an excellent, excellent album. And next up, we've got the Magnetic Fields, and this is a reissue of their first two albums, 
Uh, so you've got the wayward bus and distant plastic trees. First two albums, um, the vocals were uh, taken, lead vocals were taken by Susan Anway. She left after the second album and uh, at that point Stephen Merritt uh, took over the band and it's basically become um, the name that he uses for, for releasing all of his material, or not all of his material, but uh, quite a lot of his material. It's I describe it as uh, very twee uh, pop music, uh, similar to the Scottish band, the Pastels, if I uh, don't know if you've heard of them. Uh, they're definitely worth investigating. And I'd say that Stephen Merritt and uh, Stephen Pastel are kindred uh, cousins, really. Um, I particularly like that uh, Phil, Spector, uh, Phil Spector was the inspiration for some of the songs on the Wayward Bus, um, such as the saddest story uh, ever told. And this is a very obscure album, certainly here in the UK. Uh, I've got this for, for next to nothing, I think, uh, 20 pence, I think it was. Um, this is Maniac's uh, Swiss uh, garage rock band. Their first album was produced by uh, Robin Wills, the guitarist from the Barracudas. Uh, he's one of the uh, musicians that uh, I really like. Uh, and this second album is produced by uh, Jim Dickinson at Ardent Studios in Memphis. So that was the reason uh, I picked the album up. Just based on the front cover, I, I think I would have passed, but uh, um, the fact it's recorded at Ardent Studios um, and Jim Dickinson plays uh, piano and Hammond organ on the album as well. Uh, I don't think there's any really standout tracks, but it's, uh, it's a nice enough listen, so I'm quite pleased I picked that one up. And next we've got the essential Benny More. He was a Cuban singer and he also was the leader of a 21 piece uh, big band called Banda Gigante. And he had a beautiful tenor voice and was a real charismatic present, uh, presence on stage. And this helped make him the biggest star in pre-revolutionary uh, Cuba. Uh, sadly, he died uh, in 1963. He had uh, <coughs> excuse me. He had uh, cirrhosis of the liver. Uh, this is a absolutely faultless uh, double CD uh, celebration of his music. And I thoroughly enjoyed uh, this album. I wasn't aware it even existed. It's uh, Roy Orbison. Uh, it's from 1970 when his career was a bit in the doldrums. Uh, he wasn't having hit records anymore. It's called Hank Williams' The Roy Orbison Way. And this could have been a disaster. It could have been over-the-top productions on uh, fantastic Hank Williams songs which don't lend themselves to, to such an approach. But it's a very understated um, performance vocally and, and instrumentally. And... Um, I think it really brings out the emotion on, on some of the great Hank Williams songs. So I'm very pleased I bought that. And next up, we've got Gilbert O'Sullivan and his fourth album from 1974, and it's called A Stranger in My Own Backyard. And uh, it was recorded in studios in Los Angeles, so it's got uh, a nice sort of California sheen to the material. Uh, it could almost have fitted in on the um, albums that uh, the Reprise label were, were bringing out at that time. Um, it contains, for me, one of the great songs of the 1970s, and it's called It's So Easy To Be Sad. The vocal harmonies on the last third of the song will just uh, stop you in your tracks. And uh, it's lovely packaging. It comes with a nice booklet. And... Um, I'll just read you what Gilbert O'Sullivan says in the liner notes uh, about the track, It's So Easy To Be Sad. Um, he says, It's my mother's sister's favourite song of mine. I like the lines about looking at the statue in the square 
and I like the fact it goes off on a diversion at the end, making a political point in a light-hearted way. And next up, we've got the Oyster Band. Here I stand. Uh, this is a <coughs> this is a limited edition uh, pressing that came with a copy of the official fanzine for. Just share a couple of pages. The official fanzine uh, of the Oyster Band. Um, I can't say I'm a particularly a fan of the uh, Oyster Band. Um, I like that they use uh, folk instrumentation, but this album is quite um, uh, rock centric, and um, yeah, it's. I don't think it's a, a classic by any means, but um, yeah, it's worth investigating, I suppose. Next up, another folk artist. He comes from South Yorkshire, Martin Simpson, and. I rate him so highly that I'd put him in the same category as uh, Richard Thompson. He's a fantastic guitar player and um, is a brilliant interpreter of traditional folk songs and a great songwriter as well. In fact, um, the best song on this album is called uh, Never Any Good and it won an award as the best original folk song at uh, the B uh, BBC Radio 2 Folk Awards and it is, um, it's just an incredible piece of work and there's also some nice um, uh, traditional folk songs which he interprets such as uh, uh, Lakes of Champlain I think that's how it's pronounced and he also covers um, Randy Newman's song Louisiana 1927 and uh, Jackson Brown uh, does some backing vocals on that track. Um, it would have been nice if Jackson Brown had come over to South Yorkshire to uh, uh, record his uh, contribution, but apparently he did it uh, um, in California. And um, it's got some nice liner notes as well, if I can just get at them. Written by Martin Simpson, and uh, they explain the background to uh, the traditional songs that he plays on this album. It's um, a modern classic of British folk music, uh, Prodigal Son, so it's uh, definitely worth investigating. And uh, next up, this was a fantastic buy in my local charity shop for a pound. Um, I know they look uh, like they're a, a bunch of skinheads, in, uh, and they are, but uh, the band uh, were a ska band from the uh, late 60s, a seven piece band uh, formed in London and um, they were aware that the, the skinheads from the late 60s were really enjoying reggae music and so they came up with an anthem for, for skinheads, uh, Skinhead Moon Stomp and um, they were also recording as, it's a very confusing story because uh, they were recording as the Pyramids and also uh, Seven Letters and a Simmerip all at the same time. And uh, this album uh, includes their original uh, album, uh, Skinhead Moon Stomp, but then it's got, I think it's about, um, oh, more than 30, at least more than 30, let's see. Yeah, more than 30 extra uh, tracks which are drawn from the same time period as uh, the original album came out. Some unreleased tracks as well as tracks by the Pyramids and uh, Seven Letters. Um, I think people of a certain age here in the UK, they'll instantly recognise uh, the track Skinhead Moon Stomp. But I'd also point you in the direction of uh, Stay With Him, which uh, was recorded as the Pyramids. And uh, uh, that is a, a really, really good song. Right, and a band, I suppose, were past their peak by the time um, this album came out, which is called um, uh, Bloody Tourists. At this point, the band had lost uh, Kevin Godley and Lol Cream, so that um, the variety that came from having four songwriters was lost, and um, there was a gradual 
they gradually got uh, worse over time. Uh, there are some good performances uh, here. Um, not sure Dreadlock Holiday, which was a massive hit single at the time, uh, is one I'd particularly rate, but um, uh, I really do like the track for you and I, and I can highly recommend that track. But if you're gonna get 10cc, you're better off getting uh, some of the albums by the original uh, four piece. Uh, the variety of the material and the, the, the wit and uh, humor that they brought to the, the songwriting um, bore comparisons really with the, with the Beatles from the 60s and certainly Wings in the 1970s. And last up, this album was uh, really heavy going. Uh, a lot of um, uh, jazz, rock I suppose you'd call it. It's called Polytown. I picked this one up because I saw the name Mick Kahn and he was the bass guitarist in Japan. Uh, one of the 80s bands that, that I do uh, rate quite highly. And he's joined by uh, David Torn, uh, the guitar player, and Terry Bozio on uh, drums. And um, David Torn, his playing reminds me a bit of uh, Robert Fripp's style of guitar playing from the 1980s. And so, uh, um, yeah, it all gets a bit too much, but uh, yeah, it's nice to hear uh, Mick Kahn's uh, bass playing, a uh, fantastic bass guitarist. And that's it for now. I've already got a pile building up of um, some more CD purchases, uh, so I'll be posting another in this series, probably in about a week's time. And I've also got some uh, vinyl, which I promise to uh, uh, post, uh, vinyl purchases, mainly from car boot sales. So um, look out for that one in the next few days. And again, if you've not subscribed, it would be fantastic if you would. So, okay, bye for now and um, I'll be back soon.